What's up, guys? Yo. I don't know if anybody's in here quite yet. Looks like maybe we've already got two people. How's your Saturday night going, everybody? Fishing with Vince in the house. What's up, dude? How are you? Hope you're having a great night. I am just going to slam this little mini muffin, open this Coke, and we will get to hanging out for a little bit. I've got a little package from Six Cents that I purchased this past week. Some clearance baits. Damn, that's good. Vince says he just got his mystery tackle box today. Cool, man. Right on. Justin in the house. Although, at work again tonight, unfortunately, won't be able to stay long. No problem. Um, depending on how long you can stay, uh, doesn't quite matter. But I will get to unboxing this package here in the next couple minutes. So maybe you'll be able to see one or two things that are in here. Uh, there was quite a bit on clearance over on Six Cents on their website. Uh, I noticed that like a week or two ago. So pulled the trigger on some stuff about a week ago. Got this in the mail the other day and have been waiting to open it um, until our live stream. I considered hopping on last night. Just wasn't quite feeling it. So here I am now. Hope you guys are having a great night. Looks like Ron is in here. What up, Bassless Chap? Jack Erickson, doing pretty well, man. Thanks for asking. How are you? So, guys, we've already got four or five people in here. Let's just go ahead and dig right in, and I'll show you what I picked up from Six Cents. Uh, most of these, actually, it's a grab bag. It, it's um, some stuff that I already have, some stuff that I've never tried before. So, I'm pretty excited for what's in here. Alright, so I only got one pack of soft plastics in the package, but this is the brand new Six Cents Whale Swim Bait. Okay, this is a little bit different than their Divine Swim Bait in that it has a little bit of a different body shape to it. This is a four and a half inch size. I think it's the only size that they make right now, if I'm not mistaken. So, um... Four and a half inches is a very solid kind of do everything size, but this is a standalone swim bait. This is not designed to be a trailer as much, though it can be fished as a trailer. Wow, the, the soft plastic is quite a bit um, softer on this bait than it is on the Divine swim baits, which um, you know I do like, especially on the back of a swim jig. But this guy has some side fins on it, and it has a belly slit for a weighted swim bait hook. So, for example, I'll pull out a uh, an owner beast hook for you. I swear I gotta have some four outs in here. In my opinion, the four out will probably suit this swim bait just fine so we're going to take that owner cps spring screw it straight into the nose give it one more twist and then we'll line it up push it straight through the back of the bait and uh and check this out here we go. Awesome little weedless swim bait. Don't even really need to tuck the hook into the back. It doesn't have really a hook slot, but it's almost designed for a beast hook like this and sits totally flush on the top of the bait when it comes out there. So this color here is called electric, electric shad, I believe. Very natural. Uh, bait fish pattern, a lot of green, kind of a pearl belly, and a mixture of flake in there that is kind of green and purple. I don't know how well you guys can see that flake in there. 
Very cool deal there. Um, and a bait that I'm excited to throw. This reminds me of the 5-inch Spark Shad from Mega Bass. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison. The Spark Shad is, has a flatter and wider back, but a very similar belly design with these, these fins in almost the same place. And it has the eyes on it. So a little bit more realistic with the Spark Shad, a little bit more tail action. But this whale, 4.5 inch whale swim bait from Six Sense is new to me and new to the market in the last couple of months and uh, is one that I'm very excited to play around with this upcoming year. So they're a lot more affordable than the Spark Shad is. I want to say that these guys cost like, I don't know, five bucks a pack for the five of them. They've got a weird insert in there uh, to hold these tails in place, but they're actually kind of wanting to screw up the tails. So I might just leave this pack open for now and deal with it later. We'll move on to the next bait. So I'm just grabbing at random here. This is a bait that I've never used before, and it is gigantic. This is the Six Cents Mag Dog topwater walking bait. And this is essentially the same size as like the uh, the Six Cents um, or the Strike King Mega Dog. So the larger size of the sexy dog, although one thing I noticed straight out of the pack here is that these have two treble hooks, not three. And this guy weighs an ounce and a half and is 150 millimeters. So very similar size wise to that mega dog. And I think price wise, it's about the same. I want to say this thing retails for about 13 dollars or so but i got it on clearance for like six bucks so i don't think there's an invoice in here for me to tell you what i paid for these but most of these should still be available on six senses website if you want to go check them out so this color here is called bluegill spawn and it is gorgeous it does have a little bit of translucency to it which you may or not be able to see as I roll that ball around. So listen to the knocker in it. So big walking bait here, a lot of orange on the belly, a lot of purple and blue on the sides, green back, gorgeous paint job as usual with six cents lures. So pretty excited about that one, especially since it was only like six or seven bucks. So couldn't help myself but pick it up and give it a shot because I do have one of those mag dogs from uh, Strike King and I did pay close to full retail, you know, 12, 13, 14 dollars for it, whatever it costs. So, Matthias, what's up, dude? How are you doing tonight? Next up is another gigantic bait, okay? This is a lure that I've never had. In fact, I don't think I have a square bill this size at all uh, in my possession. And this is the Cloud9 Magnum Square Bill 9.8. I don't know why they call it 9.8 necessarily, but maybe we can find out here in a second. This thing is 104 millimeters long. Holy shnikes. So it's over four inches in length. Look at how absurd this looks. I mean, here's my hand. This is a square bill crankbait. Holy shnikes. So this is truly a Magnum square bill. Unbelievable. Um, and also, I want to say this thing retails for like 12 bucks, and I paid six. So super good deal on this. This color here is called Ghost Pro Shad. So really cool, uh, clear bait fish pattern with some iridescence to it. It's got a blue uh, 
bluish green back and then a, a clear side with a little bit of purple fades to some orange and like a bone type of belly so awesome bait here but giant hooks giant bait and it's silent um at least i think yeah so awesome they say this thing dives five to ten feet and um wow uh, this thing would be would do a great job at imitating big gizzard shad for me here in the next couple months as we get open water in some of the the smaller lakes that i fish that have just some absolute giant gizzard shad i think that could be a good imitator along with some swim baits other things so i'd fish this on a, a rip rack bank or around some lay downs but good lord um, if I'm not mistaken, this is about the same size as like the Strike King 8.0. So a little over four inches and it weighs like an ounce and some change. 1.5 ounces. Oh my. So both of these baits are absolutely giant. And ones that I didn't already own. They've got to have like size one or one aught hooks on them. Huge. So... I'm not quite sure uh, how often I will fish those baits, but given the price tag on them, I had to pick them up and see what they're about. Um, okay, next on the clearance is the Quake Thud 70. So if you're not familiar with the Quake, it is uh, one of the two lipless crankbaits that Six Sense makes, but the Thud is their one knocker version so listen to the the little rattle on this guy so it just has a knocker that goes side to side that's placed here in the belly of the bait can you see that right down here so gorgeous color here called ghost no this is not shad's oh i guess they call it shad sense so this size is the 70 it weighs a half ounce very classic size lipless crankbait but in that one knocker so typically speaking most people would throw a one knocker for like craw patterns because that sound that clacking imitates a crawfish scooting on the bottom a little bit better than than a typical rattle however Sometimes it's just that subtle difference in sound from the typical high pitch of a rattle trap um, that can make the difference. So if they're feeding on shad and on small bait fish that are white or clear, uh, that are going to look a little bit more like this, then sometimes just having a knocker instead of a rattle can make a difference in getting an extra bite or two. So decided to scoop one of those up. Next up, and I'm not going in any particular order. These are all just what was on clearance for six cents. There was one or two in here that I picked up that were not on clearance, at least I think, and we'll go over those in a minute. But this is the Curve 55 small body, medium diving crankbait. Essentially, this is their wiggle wart style bait. It's just 57 millimeters long, weighs three eighths of an ounce and dives five to nine feet. I've talked a lot about the Curve 55 in the last month or so. This guy runs pretty true, but um, is just a little bit shallower diving than a lot of the other baits in its class. So other baits that I throw like this are obviously the Wiggle Wart, the, the uh, Spro Rock Crawler, the Striking 3XD, the Norman Middle N, and they all just are a little bit different in size, in diving depth, and sound profile as well. So um, this guy is a cool color that they call High Def Craw. So it's a very brown, natural craw pattern. And I have some craws in that same lake that have the oversized gizzard shad that are very brown. Um, they don't change a lot in color. You don't get a lot of blue hues 
or red hues to those craws. They just tend to be like a brownish green. So I think that high def craw is going to be an awesome color pattern to throw in that specific body of water, but we'll have to see. Chris Curtis says, do you have any of yours? Do you have any of yours that you could write music so you can find used? What? What are you talking about, Chris? Do you have any of yours that you write music? Uh, retype that comment. Let me know what it is that you're trying to say, dude, because I don't understand what you're saying. Okay, this is the Movement 80X crankbait. This is the shallow diving, grass fishing crankbait especially. This thing is 80 millimeters long per its name, dives just one to three feet, weighs five eighths of an ounce and has a pretty loud rattle in it. And this color is called Wild Lava Crawfish. It's got a very reddish back and a super orange belly. Love this color. Um, it's going to be a killer pre-spawn color. So anywhere that I can find super shallow riprap banks or early um, growing grass that is in good condition in the pre-spawn before the fish uh, move up and actually spawn. I think that reddish orange color is going to do some, some damage. So excited about that guy. Okay, Chris says, do you have anything that you're not using? Any lures I'm not using? You talking about fishing baits, dude, or are you talking about music? Okay, next up, this is the Quake 70 I was just talking about, but this is not the thud. This is a standard Quake, so listen to the rattle. It's got a relatively high pitch, softer sound than a lot of other rattle trap style baits on the market. Same exact profile as that Quake Thud. Same size, same weight, same everything. Actually, this guy weighs 5 eighths of an ounce, whereas that Quake Thud weighs a half ounce. So a little bit different there, but this is called Collins Yellow, and this is just a true mustard, a yellow crawfish pattern, lipless crankbait. I don't have anything like it. I really don't have any chartreuse black back, lipless crankbaits, and, um, and I thought it was unique. So in muddy water, this Collins yellow color is going to slay, and, um, and I thought it was worth picking up, especially for the price tag. It was five, maybe six bucks. And um, it's just different. So I really like that um, for the sake of having something unique to throw. Yeah, Chris, I do, of course. I've got a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I'm, I'm somewhere between an enthusiast and a collector. I do fish a lot, but I like to mix it up, try new things, uh, learn about different lures, try new techniques, all that kind of stuff. But of course, there's a lot of stuff that I don't use. So if you follow me on Instagram or you subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, you'll see that I do a giveaway uh, once a month, more so just to give back and, and um, appreciate the fact that you guys are supporting me by following my content and uh, engaging with the community that I'm, I'm building, essentially. So once a month, I do a giveaway. I just did my giveaway last week. Um, for the month of January, and it was a bunch of cold water crankbaits for the most part. So a couple of Berkeley Flicker Shads, one of those Six Cents Curve 55s, one of these um, Quake 70s, uh, a Wiggle Wart, a Norman Middle End, and a Strike King um, Mark Rose little ledge spoon. So probably 40 bucks worth of baits, maybe a little bit more that I just gave away. 
and uh, those were all unopened. A lot of times what I'll do is just pull baits out of my boxes and that's probably what you'll see next month is uh, they'll still be high quality, high end lures, um, pretty much all ones that have never seen the water but are just sitting in my box because they're duplicates um, or I never fished them for whatever reason. And so you will see those giveaways and you'll always have a chance to enter and you'll have a reasonable chance to win. So make sure you're following me on Instagram and make sure you're subscribed to the channel here on YouTube as well if you're not already. Okay, um, then this is the Six Sense Provoke 106X Jerkbait. What up, Riley? How are you doing tonight? Everyone is doing well here. I will say real quick that um, we had a little bit of a scare this week. You know, my wife is now 35 weeks pregnant. So we are really here in the home stretch in the final trimester. And her due date is in five weeks from now. And my guess is that she will give birth some two or three weeks early. But she was experiencing... Uh, some contractions after she had a little uh, bump at the playground with my daughters. Uh, my two-year-old fell and my wife went to catch her and uh, kind of fell herself. So she made contact with her belly um, and just to be on the safe side, went to the hospital for Wednesday night um, so that she could be monitored. Everything looked just fine. So she's back home. She's back at work last night and tonight. We're all good. So thank you for asking, Riley. Appreciate you guys. This color here um, is a cool one. This is a clear water color. Again, this is Shad Sense. So this is that same color that I showed you in the Quake Thud 70. This is like a clear water shad type of color. And the Provoke 106, if you're not familiar with it, is a very, very good jerkbait for the price. It's right in that middle price range like 12 or 13 bucks, but this color, maybe they're phasing it out because there were multiple baits in this color that were on clearance. So I decided to pick this one up. I already have two or three baits uh, or colors of this bait rather and really like them. So I picked that one up on clearance and then I went out of my way to purchase one full price um, in this very, very unique color. And it is called Ditchweed. So check this thing out. It is red on one side and yellow on the other. So this is almost like the same concept as the old uh, Bomber Mistake color where it's two-toned. And so what's really cool is that with a jerk bait, it's going to dive side to side or um, it's going to dart side to side. And so literally fish that are in front of the bait as it's coming toward the fish are going to see a totally different look as this bait darts and it's going to confuse them and it's going to elicit reaction strikes that you wouldn't ordinarily get and um and i couldn't help myself so i got one other bait that was full priced because it's been on my list and i absolutely love this color from six cents and this is the flat 75X in the black magic color. So the flat 75X is just a little bit bigger than your average flat sided square bill. And again, this black magic color is wicked. There are not very many black and blue crankbaits on the market. It's got this cool chartreuse belly, more green than chartreuse and that green eye. So. Um, interestingly in cold water that is a little bit muddy or super clear, this black magic color comes into play and, um, and I'm going to try and give it a whirl here once we get open water. So again, I will do a quick run through. Looks like six cents threw in this, uh, awesome little sunglasses retainer. You know, a deal that you'd put on your sunglasses so that they don't fall off your your head or off your neck. Um, so, one more time. 
Here are the baits that I picked up this month. Uh, where was the first thing that I had? I already hung it up. Thank you very much, Lucita Mafia. Hey, Lucita, what's your first name, man? Here in our community, we try and go by, you know, call each other by our first names. As you see, Bassless Chap is Ron Holly. Riley's in here. Um, Chris is in here. There's a number of other people. We've got, you know, fluctuating from five to seven people in here. It's a pretty tight-knit community that we've got, but... Um, we try and stay tight knit, as I said, and we try to support each other in all ways possible. So I, I really, really appreciate you saying congratulations on the baby and that you're praying for us. Can't tell you how much that means, man. So one more time, picked up a pack of the new six inch whale 4.5 inch swim baits in the electric shad color. Here I've got it rigged on a four aught weighted owner beast hook I picked up one of the mag dog giant topwater walking baits in the bluegill spawn picked up one of the giant magnum square bill crankbaits um, in this ghost pro shad color both of these baits are oversized and weigh an ounce and a half so um, almost need upsized gear to be able to throw them than what you'd throw a standard topwater walking bait or a standard square bill crankbait on. Then I picked up two of the Quake lipless crankbaits, both in the 70 size. One is the standard Quake, the rattling, in this Collins yellow color. And one is the Quake Thud, that one knocker in the Shad Sense color. Speaking of the Shad Sense, picked up same color in the Provoke 106X jerkbait. And that ditchweed color I just showed you, yellow on one side, red on the other. Picked up one of the Curve 55 crankbaits in the high def craw color one of the movement 80x crankbaits in the what do they call it lava craw something like that and lastly the crush 75 flat in the black magic so picked up about 10 different lures from six cents i think i paid like 60 or 70 bucks so very very reasonable and uh yeah couldn't help it i saw somebody mention that on a different live stream like a week or two ago so i went and checked their website out scoped it out for a few days thought about it ultimately pulled the trigger and um excited to throw these in my boxes and put them to work come this spring and summer right on chris thank you man Lucido Mafia, tell us what your name is, bro. And guys, what do you want to talk about now that I'm done opening that package? Because we can kind of open it up. I've been on here for some 30 minutes or so, and uh, I'm happy to talk about anything and everything that you guys want to talk about. Um, I'm a little bit scatterbrained in terms of what I've got going on right now, fishing-wise, lure-wise. What I've picked up as of late, what I've got rigged up, and um, how I'm organizing my boxes. So if you guys want to talk about techniques, if you want to talk about um, individual lures, if you want to talk about rod and reel combos, or line, or knots, or anything under the sun, throw some questions in the chat section, and let's chat. Riley, thank you so much for the $1. I appreciate you. You really don't need to be sending donations in every time they were doing a live stream, but um, it's very generous of you, and I appreciate it. 
you keep that up and I'm going to keep sending you packages from time to time. So you say this is your weekly live TV show. Well, good deal. I'm happy to be here for you. And I'm happy you're here too. So um, I did just place my discount tackle order uh, for the month just the other day. So I've got some cool stuff coming and we'll show that to you probably next week once I have it in. Um, I'll record my unboxing video hopefully before we do the live stream so that I can pull things out of the package and show them to you up close just like I like to do on these live streams. But um, yeah, it was another pretty wild grab bag. A lot of soft plastics, a couple of hard baits and um, and I think you guys will be pretty excited about what I picked up. But I don't want to spoil that too much. Um, one thing I did want to show you, a combo that I recently rigged up. And check this out. I got my rod sleeves on here thanks to Justin. I don't know if you guys remember him sending those to me oh, a couple months back. But check this out, guys. This is a budget version of the Firecraw chatterbait that you guys ought to consider throwing this spring. You should be able to get your hands on these, both of these items, pretty easily right now, depending on where you shop. And I did just pick up another one of these from Discount Tackle and will probably be giving it away um, for the month of March. So not this month, but next month. And this is the Firecraw color of the original Chatterbait. So this is the $5 Z-Man Chatterbait. But they've painted the blade black, which I love. And they've painted the head of the Chatterbait to be exactly like the firecraw pattern so it's got that same skirt color same head painting and um and it's legit now the original chatterbait doesn't have the same vibration startup time uh or the same hook or the hand tied skirt that the jackhammer does so of course it's not the same bait not quite as good but check out this trailer that i've got put on it this if you guys don't know is obviously a little Berkeley Pit Boss. This in the power bait version, so it's not the old Havoc, but it's not the new Max Scent either. It's the in between the power bait. And I picked this up from Dix, and this color I think is called Fire Craw. And so if you notice when I put that skirt back down, that this matches up flawlessly. And that Pit Boss has a lot of action to it. So I don't know if I mentioned last week um, after I did some underwater video footage of some jig trailers, uh, like finesse jig trailers, like Bitsy Bug style jigs, little guys, and of some Ned Rig baits that I put the baby Pit Boss, that little uh, three inch Pit Boss Junior on a jig and it had a lot of action, especially when you swim the bait. Um, those side kickers on it, you know, it's got four kickers, two on the outside and two on the inside, but those side ones really kick, kind of like a rage craw. I was very impressed by it, and I could just tell immediately that the Pit Boss is going to be a killer chatterbait trailer. So when I saw that fire craw color, I just, I knew it was going to be a wicked pairing on the back of a firecraw chatterbait. So of course I could throw it on the back of, you know, a firecraw jackhammer, which I do still have one unopened from last year. I had to go swimming to retrieve the one that I fished with last year. I did get it hung up once or twice, had to hop in the water to get it. But um, that lure did some work for me last year, put, you know, a dozen or two fish um, on the bank, not in the boat for me. But um, anyway, Riley says, thanks again for the partnership with the giveaway. 
As soon as that package gets to you, you can do whatever you want with it, whether you keep it or give it away. No problem. Unfortunately, you got to dip out. You got work at 4 a.m. tomorrow. Dang, yo. Okay, no problem, Riley. Have a great rest of your night. Sleep well. Have a good day at work tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, go Chiefs, maybe. Anyway, uh, Chris says, do you have any leftover crawdads, rubber crawdads? Tell me about using itchy worms. What? What language are you talking, Chris? I've got lots of crawdad imitating soft plastics, dude. Uh, we could talk about that topic pretty much all night, but maybe I'll get into it in a minute. Looks like Ron asked um, opinions on the Beast Coast Miyagi. Dude, I like it a lot. Um, I've got one rigged on a swim jig I'll show you. So, as of now, dude, I've only got the Miyagi in two colors, but to be honest, I probably ought to stock up in a number of other colors as well. I love the quality of these baits. So, look at how soft they are. Beast Coast makes, you know, mechanical hand-poured baits. Very high quality. Great colors on these. This is a rainbow trout pattern. And this other one is like a sexy shad. Um, now, I will say, this bait was technically designed to be fished on a 6 aught owner beast hook. It has a very deep belly slot that makes for easy penetration on a 6 aught owner beast. So that soft plastic plus this deep belly slot makes for super easy hookups and once that hook penetrates um which usually you're going to have it skin hooked anyway so i could go ahead and rig one of these up for you guys if you want but i don't know that i've got uh six hot beast hooks on me let me check I've got six hot flashy swimmers, but that's not exactly what I'm looking to rig this thing on. Um, and I think the four hot beast is a little bit small for this. The eight hot you can use, but again, with how much tail action you get out of this thing, um, the six hot is what this bait was designed around. So owner beast, six hot. Um, it will work everywhere, Ron. So you say, is it good in ponds? Yes, uh, most definitely. It is a five-inch bait, I think, if I'm not mistaken. 4.75 inch. So um, it's not overwhelmingly big, which is great. So you can fish it anywhere, and you get a little bit of a larger profile because of its deep belly, but it's not super big overall profile wise it's not really long so um yeah it folds up really easily in a fish's mouth once you get bit here i've got it rigged on a six cents divine swim jig this swim jig came skirtless and i decided to hand tie the skirt on here and thin it out a bit so i really like this combo Got bit on this guy a couple times, and then uh, just went through one of those Rainbow Trout Miyagi's. Got a few bites on it last year as well. So, very, very good and borderline underrated swim bait on the market is the Miyagi. Highly recommend it, but again, I think you kind of need to use that owner beast 6 aught hook um, to fish it properly. Uh, if you are trying to fish it weedless, I would not try and use a different weighted swim bait hook. I would go with the, the owner beast. That said, you can rig it on an exposed jig head. If you're not going to fish it on a swim jig, I might consider cutting off a portion of the head 
and um, and then rigging it on a jig head. You just need to be careful because it does have a pretty wide head to start out with. So if you trim it off below the eye, you're gonna need a really fat um, or long, I guess, uh, profile jig head in order to fit flush on the bait. So uh, you could potentially use something like the Strike King Squadron head. Uh, that's one that I really like to use. Here I've got it on a, a five inch Scottsboro Tackle swimmer. And uh, yeah, really, really good bait, dude. Awesome in ponds, especially because it's weedless if you throw it on that beast hook. All right, Chris, I'll show you some crawdads. I'm gonna show you just about a half a dozen or so that are kind of my go-tos. Um, starting with the Strike King Rage Craw, okay? Here are three different colors that you probably ought to have. This is like a green pumpkin pearl. I also have just a standard green pumpkin. Um, and the Rage Craw is a very good summertime craw bait, okay? The thing to note about it is that it kicks very, very aggressively. So these these kickers go even a little bit wider and they, they flap and, uh, what should I say? They thump pretty hard. So they have this, this very wild, aggressive action. So, Best fish in warm water more than anything. Uh, but very, very good jig trailer. And also a good Texas rig bait in the summertime. Not as good for punching because those, those flapping craws are going to get caught up a little bit more. You know, pretty close in action is the Guggenbait's Kraken Craw. I would say I like it. Don't love it. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive. The claws are a little bit heavier. So um, it is going to have that aggressive action like the Rage Craw. In fact, when they created this bait, they went through Steve Parks at Rage Tail and, uh, and had the patent license. So whenever they sold these baits initially, they were using that Rage Tail flange to essentially produce the same action. Slightly different profile, slightly different scent, different colors, but essentially the same bait. Now, if you're looking to go a little bit more subtle, whether you're fishing in colder water or you're fishing around pressured fish, the Zoom Ultra Vibe Speed Craw is a really good one, okay? This guy has the, uh, the classic Ultra Vibe patent from Zoom, which has these V-cut legs. It's the same deal that they use on the Ultra Vibe Speed Worm. It's the same thing that they use on the Horny Toad. Uh, they've got a few different baits that they uh, utilize this design, and, um, and it has a, a really good fast kick. Um, so if you're fishing the bait a little bit quicker, it's not going to flap quite as much, but kick and swim a little bit better. Um, something a little bit more uh, subtle, but in between those two, it's not going to have as fast of a kick, but probably the most versatile bait of this bunch is the Rage Tail menace grub okay and this color is going to do best on the back of a swim jig or a white chatter bait or texas rig around the spawn but this guy here um has that same rage tail flange but in a grub body 
and it just has these short two appendages, kickers on the back. So this bait can be fished in almost every way you could imagine. Um, this is a great flipping bait. Like I said, it's a great jig trailer, especially on a swim jig. You can rig this thing sideways for a little bit more of a fishy uh, swim to it, or you can rig it sideways for a little bit more action. And if you're trying to imitate a craw, <clears throat> yeah, I hear you. Googan, Googan, Googan. Yeah, they, they rip kind of a lot of stuff off, but we don't need to go down that rabbit hole tonight. So, um, the, the Menace Grub is great on the back of, say, a swing head. You know, if you, if you throw a wobble head, and it's a great jig trailer of all kinds. Good Texas rig bait. Okay, one other that is worth mentioning that um, that just doesn't see the water enough in my fishing, but is a great bait, is the Biospawn. Um, help me out, guys. What do they call this? The Exo Craw? No. I don't know. This is the Biospawn Craw, and, um, and it's a good one. So, interestingly, it's got a design in the body so that you don't have to tech expose the hook. It's got this like uh, keeled belly and then a cutout so that the hook will rest in there with ease and allow for easier penetration, better hookups. It does have a flanged kicker. And then in between the two kickers, it's got this interesting, uh, pretty fat antenna with a bulbous tail on it as well. So you can customize the bait by either removing that guy and then you get more of just a standard craw or vice versa. You can remove both of the craws and you get this really funky looking punch bait. Okay. <clears throat> Exo craw, is that what it's called? Okay. Again, I, I haven't fished that bait as much as I thought I was going to over the last couple of years since I stocked up on that. Let me go to my beaver style box, uh, creature style box, because to be honest, I fish with these just a little bit more frequently than I do with the craws. And keep in mind, I do have most of these baits in smaller sizes that I use exclusively in ponds or as jig trailers, finesse jig trailers. So here I've got the baby size Rage Menace Grub. I've got some small swim baits. I've got that uh, Pit Boss Junior, the Baby Rage Craw, the Kitech Crazy Flapper, and the Zoom Tiny Brush Hog. So, um, some good ones there too, but here is arguably my favorite soft plastic craw creature style bait, and this is the Rage Tail Structure Bug, okay? Awesome profile, awesome action, very in the middle when it comes to both. Um, I throw this bait a lot. This is just a standard green pumpkin color, but very classic. It's got two appendages on the side, which just put off a little bit of vibration. It's got two kickers in the tail, which put off a nice medium amount of action, not nearly as wide kicking as the Rage Craw, but not as subtle as that Rage Menace Grub. So this is a great year round bait and you can do most things with it. So you can remove these side appendages and it will make it that much better of a flipping bait. But I think it's great on the back of a jig, great as a flipping bait, great on a wobble head, even great on a chatter bait. And, um, and I use it a lot. So I've got it in probably a half a dozen different colors, four or five different colors in this box. Plus um, I've got a, I've got two or three colors here on the wall. I would say chameleon is my favorite color in that bait. It's a very, very cool color. Now, 
the ripoff of that bait is the Guggen Baits Bandito Bug, okay? Which is also a great bait. Nothing wrong with it, other than the fact that it's a little bit more fragile than the Rage Bug. And it's a little bit more expensive. So exactly the same thing that I mentioned with that Kraken Craw is the same deal with this Bandito Bug. It's high quality, it's well done, but initially it was made uh, licensing the Rage Tail patent, which I can respect when companies do that because they're giving credit to the people who really made and designed the bait in the first place. However, I found out that Guggen has since gone around that patent and added like an extra flange here and, um, and are no longer paying royalties to Steve Parks and Rage Tail, which really kind of chaps my ass, to be honest with you. Um, I liked the original Bandito Bug uh, just fine. I've got it in like three colors, but I don't like that move that they made in going around the patent. Okay, next bait in this category that I really like is the Zoom Z-Craw. This is a little bit more subtle of a bait. And in my opinion, this thing excels in two applications. It's a bit longer, but it's got these ribs on the side and it's got those same flange kickers. So I see it as a great flipping bait and a great wobblehead bait. And that's primarily what I use it for. Um, the two downsides to this bait, in my opinion, are that one, the packaging from Zoom uh, is subpar. So they all just get stuffed into a bag. And a lot of times these things are all bent up straight out of the pack. So as you can see, like these claws are all twisted up. Not the end of the world, but it's just part of what you get with how they package their baits. And the other thing... <clears throat> is the fact that Zoom and their blend of soft plastic does not get along well with boxes. So when I close this thing up, you'll see that on the side of the Rage Tail baits, it's just fine. But over here on the Zoom side, it's warped and it's open here. Um, so a little bit disappointing and uh, just something that I've noticed over time I also throw the lizard and the brush hog uh, depending on the time of year I throw the lizard more um, when I'm fishing on the bottom so on a Carolina rig or around the spawn and kind of the same deal with the brush hog same applications however I will throw this um, on a Texas rig as well it's a great pond bait especially in this baby brush hog size so um that mostly does it here's one other bait i posted about on instagram today that you guys should know about i think i just froze let me see if it's my phone sorry about that guys I don't know how I didn't have my phone plugged in, but my battery is getting a little low, so I'm just gonna plug it in, and we should be fine moving forward. All right, so this guy here is the Reaction Innovations Man Bear Pig. Really cool bait here for a few reasons. It has the body of a beaver style bait with that ribbing but it's got a narrow profile and it's got the side legs kind of like a brush hog kicker, kind of like a brush hog. Um, so same deal. I like to throw this thing on a wobble head a lot. I think you could flip this thing fairly easily, especially if you were to cut down these crazy legs on the bottom. But to me, this is a Texas rig or wobble head style lure. And, um, just really well designed and I love the profile of it. It's also got this notch on the chin of the bait, which really helps hold a hook better than most other soft plastics. 
They've got this same design on the Spicy Beaver, which is a bait that I don't have in these boxes, but I do have on the wall behind me, and I can show you guys that as well. That's probably the last one uh, that I would mention. Gosh, there's, there's a few others that I would mention, Chris. So here's the spicy beaver in the hematoma color. This is a black on one side, blue on the other. And it's also got that same notch I was talking about. So when you're Texas rigging a bait or flipping with it, and you bring the hook in the nose and out the chin, then that bend of the hook is going to sit right at that notch. And um, you're not going to lose as many baits. You're not going to tear them up quite as easily as you would on other soft plastics. Of course, you'll still rip them up, but cool little design feature that you don't see on other baits. Okay, one other that I should mention is the Kitek Crazy Flapper, okay? This guy here, I've got one rigged on my Firecraw Jackhammer, and it lasted me pretty much all spring last year. So, surprisingly, I didn't lose any of the pinchers. This is a very underrated soft plastic bait. Just because most people, when they think Kitek, they think swim baits. You know, they're thinking of the Swing Impact Fat, but they forget that Kitek makes a whole bunch of different awesome soft plastics. And um, yeah, really, really cool bait here. Um, I stocked up on these about a year ago. All three sizes. They make it in a, a big 4.4 inch, that middle 3.6, and a smaller 2.8. So very versatile bait there. Uh, one other that I'll mention is the Z-Man Turbo Cross. And this is essentially the same thing as that Zoom Ultra Vibe Speed Craw, as you can tell by those kickers. But of course, this is made from a Laztec, a super durable bait, great on the back of a chatterbait, swim jig, Texas rig, or even as a flipping bait. So. I'm going to stop talking right there about craw and creature baits. Let me catch up on these comments real quick. Jigging with Jack in the building. What's up, dude? Chris says, do you have any extra? What I thought of why you were so it now. Do you have any other words that you're showing now? Any extra lens? I have some of those. Do you know any bug? I have a high top. I was going to tell you that your phone just free stuff. Chris, <coughs> you're speaking gibberish, brother. Chris, you gotta you gotta type slower. You gotta use your words. Try and use proper grammar and and let us know what it is that you're trying to say, because I don't understand your comments. And, uh, and I apologize for that. I wish I did. I wish we could be speaking the same language and, uh, and understanding each other. I wish you could be asking me questions that I could answer. But um, sorry for that long rant on craw, creature, beaver style baits. That just scratches the surface um, of what I've got in my collection and what I use on a regular basis. I did recently pick up uh, these chase baits lures and i showed them to you on last week's live stream i know that ron was excited to hear and see these um this is a couple of really cool designs so this bait is called the flip flop and check this out they've got a i'm gonna have to pull it out to show you but they have this um they call it a rolling hood wing design so on the sides of the bait are these super thin soft plastic wing and it flutters on the fall. So really cool weightless Texas rig bait 
free rig, Tokyo rig. Um, super cool design here. Very thin pinchers. This is just a standard beaver style bait, the flip flop. And this is the mud bug color. Um, very excited to give these a shot. Mostly just because it's different. And then same design, but different pinchers is the love bug. And this bait has essentially the kickers of the ultra vibe speed craw or the turbo craws that I just showed you. So the rolling hood wings are still there. Same body shape, but the kickers have this very aggressive craw um, pincher look to it. And then it's got those ultra vibe speed craw cutout pinchers. Some long antenna as well. So very cool bait. This is in the green pumpkin chartreuse color. Love that. And um, I'm pretty excited to put both of these to work this year as well. In my opinion, I think they're going to excel in the summertime. Uh, when you know where bass are located and you just need to put something in their face that's a little bit different, it's a little bit slow moving on the fall, I think those chase baits are going to be sweet. So, <clears throat> anyway, that's a little bit of what I've got. We've been on for over an hour now. I'm probably going to dip out of here. Ron says, Tyler, you're killing me. Uh, why is that, dude? Because you want to try those chase baits or what? Or just because of what I said to Chris. Chris said, I said, are you, do you have any more those question? Chris, where are you from? How old are you? Why aren't you typing full sentences uh, or using your words, man? You just typed, I said, are you, do you have any more those question? That That is not a question. That is not a sentence. That does not make sense. I wish I knew what you were trying to say. But uh, yeah, man, feel free to send me a direct message on Instagram. Feel free to, uh, you know, hit me up on Instagram. We could do a, a live chat together. Um, or send me an email with something that's a little bit more coherent so that we can actually have a conversation because the most that I got out of what you asked tonight was to see some of the craws that I have. And so I showed them to you. You asked if I have extra stuff. I told you that I do monthly giveaways. I do hard baits and soft plastics. I just try and gear those giveaways around the time of year that we're fishing. So given that we're frozen or it's super cold water and we're in winter going on early pre-spawn fishing in most of the country, I decided to make that about hard baits, mid-depth or deeper diving crankbaits and spoons, okay? You'll see a little bit of a switch up next month and we'll be moving more into the pre-spawn. You might see stuff with chatterbaits. Again, we'll see more and more of that as we get into the spring. So February, March, April will be full of chatterbaits, lipless crankbaits, um, soft plastics. Maybe next month we'll have a, a jerkbait or two in there. So again, it has everything to do with the time of year. Ron says he wants whatever Chris has. Yeah, Chris, it sounds like you're uh you're either hammered or you're you're on something special um or you just don't know how to use a keyboard. Um I don't know if you're watching on your phone and you just can't see what you're typing or if you're too young to uh to really even put stuff together. Or, yeah, if you're a little bit messed up and uh, and you can't string together a legitimate sentence. But either way, man, um, I appreciate you hanging out in here. I'm not trying to dog you too bad. But, again, I wish we could be having more of a legitimate conversation that's two-way. Because 
I am here to help you guys out. And I'm here to hang out and for us to have these types of conversations where we can talk about lures, talk about baits. Um, if you're just in here asking for free stuff, I don't know that that's going to be, uh, you know, that this is going to be your scene. If you want to hang out for an hour or an hour and a half once a week to just hear me talk about baits and show you baits and give advice, answer questions, um, it might not be your deal. If you want to get free stuff, make sure you're following me on Instagram and you're subscribed here on YouTube. Look out for those those posts that are about once a month and uh, and you'll have a decent chance to win some free baits. But that's about it, man. Um, if you're a real contributor around here and you ask curious questions, you ask for advice, um, oftentimes I will do kind of an exchange and send care packages to people that I really care about. I've done that with Ron, Bassless Chap. I've done that with Riley Belden. I've done that with Justin in Wyoming and a number of other people as well. So um, I'd like to consider myself generous with the stuff that I have, but I don't just randomly throw out free stuff to people who just come on and ask for it. So again, this is a relationship type of deal. Chris says, I'm talking on my speakerphone. That's why it's coming up with you. I would say what I said. Okay. Um, are you using your speakerphone just uh, for fun or because something's wrong with your hands or because you can't use your keyboard or what? Because it's not working very well, man. Um, the technology is not to the point where the dictation is spot on. Uh, nothing that you have commented tonight has been coherent. Like nothing. And I appreciate that you've been active in the chat and that you've left a bunch of comments or tried to ask a bunch of questions. But um, again, I just, I don't understand what you're saying, bro. So guys, there's five people in here. Nine thumbs up. Really appreciate you. Uh, if you haven't already... Give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And um, feel free to contact me anytime you want. My email is on my profile page. My Instagram handle is hooksets.rfree. And I post there every day. I'm on here every week. I've got videos coming to you. Some underwater footage. Some knot tying videos. Uh... I should start doing a little bit more regular posting here on YouTube um, that is not just live streams, giveaways, and unboxings, but hope you guys enjoyed hanging out tonight. Thank you so much for doing so. Appreciate you, especially you, Ron. I give up as well. I'm out of here, dude. Um, hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Don't know if you're watching the Super Bowl tomorrow, but should be a good game. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to it, even though I'm not a fan of either team. I think both teams really deserve to be there and, uh, and have a stacked lineup. And it should be a really interesting chess match of a football game, considering the quarterbacks are good, the offenses have some sweet weapons, and the defenses know how to do their job. So anyway, I'm kind of rooting for the Chiefs just because I'm not a big Tom Brady fan. But at the same time, I don't like to root for the Chiefs because we're in the same division, given that I'm a Broncos fan. So, whatever. Um, I just like Mahomes a little bit better than Tom Brady, at least at this moment in time. So, hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Thank you so much for hanging out. I'm going to leave you there, and, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Love you, Ron.